How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today we're going to talk about batteries. They're normally pretty boring. It's just one big block of thing that provides you energy. But when you combine it with solar panels and a hybrid inverter, it can actually help you save money over the long run. If you have people install solar for you, it's going to cost a certain amount. If you buy a fully contained battery with inverter system, it's going to cost a little bit lower, but also a certain amount. But if you go and do the DIY way, it's going to cost even less. If you have someone install solar for you, you, the return on investment is usually around 20 years. This means that only after 20 years are you going to break even on the cost of the whole system, but you have to pay all of that up front. If you build your own system, the ROI is closer to about five to 10 years or so. I think it's a saving money aspect of solar that makes me so interested in it because once you have this system in place, you no longer have to pay for your electric bill. When the sun shines, I'm happy. But when the sun goes down, I'm still happy because the batteries are providing the energy then. So when Golden Mate reached out to me, I'm like, okay, I'll do a video on it. And at the same time, I'll teach you guys about batteries in general and how to build a system. This video is for educational purposes. Attempt at your own risk. Follow your local rules and regulations and local laws. With that said, let's get started. 2,560 watt hours times two, so around five kilowatt hour. My energy needs for this entire house, it's roughly seven to eight kilowatt hour per day without car charging. If you buy one of these right now, it costs about $620 each. I'll have a 5% off coupon code. So that'll bring it down a little bit further down. I purchased a whole array of stuff to go with this for about $800 or so. So 600, 600, 800, you got $2,000 of total system cost for a five kilowatt system with 3000 watt output power. Now you have other systems that has a battery, has an inverter, everything all built into one big block. Let's take a look how much those cost on Amazon. For this system that I'm about to build, it costs around $1,950. An Anchor Soli F2000 with four kilowatt of capacity, so quite a bit lower, and 2,300 watt output, it costs $2,600. So over $600 more than the DIY way. EcoFlow Delta Max with an extra battery combined it's around 4,000 watt hours with 2,400 watt output. Total cost $2,700. EcoFlow Delta Pro, 3,600 watt hours. So significantly lower than the DIY way. 20% more wattage output costing at $2,900. An Okitel P5000 has the same capacity, lower wattage output at 2,200 watts, but it costs $3,000, over $1,000 more. This is the case most of the time whenever you do something yourself, you essentially have to become the expert at that particular thing. Cooking, instead of eating out at a restaurant, costs you significantly less. When you try to repair your own car, it costs significantly less. When you try to be your own plumber, whatever. Anything DIY costs a lot less. So being a DIY type of person has this financial incentive. You can greatly reduce your burn rate, increase your savings, save that much faster towards retirement. I bought a Chin's 24 volt 3000 watt inverter for $465. That's the main cost. Other things that cost significant amounts are the wires. You don't think that it's gonna cost much, but these are copper wires and they're heavy and expensive. There are circuit breakers that you must have between every power source, including the solar, the AC you're using to charge the whole system, between the inverter and the battery, even the connection points to these posts cost money, so you gotta add all that up as well. I have 10 pieces of two gauge lugs, cost 10 bucks. Ferrule crimp kit, which are these little post things that you crimped on stranded wires, and this allows a very good contact into the circuit breakers. Amphenol MC4 connection cables. This is a connection cable to the solar power. You actually have to buy the tools to do all the crimping as well. So all of this, I added up and it's still $1,950. I'm gonna talk a bit about lithium ion phosphate batteries. This is mainly to understand the system because in order to build something safely, you need to know more about it. Here's a lithium ion phosphate battery voltage versus capacity. We have batteries in our lives everywhere. Alkaline, nickel metal hydride, lithium ion. This one is lithium iron phosphate. And all of these different chemistries have 
a different charge curve. So if you charge each one of these to 100%, it's gonna read a different voltage. Here's how to read this chart. The x-axis is the battery capacity. So let's say we start with an empty battery. It starts off at 2.5 volts, and as you charge it to 25%, it increases in voltage rapidly. Between 25% and 90% capacity, the voltage rises very slowly. So this is a very non-linear curve. And then when you charge it all the way and you're still putting energy into it, it's gonna read 3.65 volts. If you take off the leads and it's still at 100%, it's gonna settle down in voltage a bit. And for lithium ion phosphate for each cell, it's gonna settle down to 3.4 volts. This particular battery, they put four in series, which is called 4S, and it has about a 12.8 volt nominal voltage. If you're trying to read the battery capacity from the battery, you actually have to know if you're charging it, discharging it, doing nothing with it, because all of these voltages is gonna change depending on how you're using it at the moment. Now let's take a look at the specifications of this battery. Nominal voltage 12.8. There are four cells in series. So you divide by four and each one's nominal voltage is 3.2 volts. If you look at the lithium ion phosphate chemistry, 3.2 volts is around 17% charge. Nominal capacity is 200 amp hours, meaning at 12.8 volts, it can eject 200 amps for an entire hour. Of course, this battery can't do that. The most it can do is actually 120 amps. So the amp hour means it can output 200 amps for one hour, if it could do 200 amps. If you multiply 12.8 nominal voltage by 200 amps, you're gonna get the energy, which is 2,560 watt hours over here. What's the resistance here? 30 milliohms. There's gonna be at minimum 30 milliohm resistance. That's just built in into the battery. Mechanical specifications in millimeters from end to end is 21 inches by nine and a half by nine and a half. 25 kilograms. That's quite heavy. Let's measure this. 55.2 pounds. Personally, I can lift it just fine with these handles. It makes it really easy. M8 terminal type and the diameter of the screw is around five and 16 inch. You gotta buy the inverter first and then you look at what gauge wire it requires for all the power inputs and outputs. After you get the wires, then you get the terminals that fits exactly to those wires and also a lug nut post that would fit an M8 hole. Charge voltage is 14.4 volts. So 14.4 divided by four is actually 3.6 volts. The charge voltage is just slightly under the maximum voltage of the cells internally. This is very important because you don't want to overcharge your batteries. If you overcharge it, you will break them. Lithium batteries are super sensitive to overcharge and over discharge. This is the absolute maximum that the internal cells should reach. If it goes over, it's game over. Of course, these batteries have a battery management system called a BMS and internally it has two temperature probes for overheating and overcooling. If it goes over a certain temperature, it cuts the output off. If it goes under a certain temperature, it also cuts the output off. Because these batteries have four in series, when you charge and discharge it, there's slight manufacturing tolerance difference between the cells. So when you do this over time, each battery is gonna be slightly more charged than the other. The way these batteries get around this weird offset in charge is to put tiny wires in between each set of cells at least. So there's four sets of cells. So each of those little wires in a BMS goes and charge or discharge the sub pack. So each of the four cell subsections or equal voltage. This is called balanced charging. Standard charge current of 40 amps, maximum charge current of 100 amps. Generally, if you want the most life out of your batteries, you don't want to do maximum charge all the time because it creates heat and this will shorten the lifetime of your battery. So for maximum life, you want to charge it as slow a rate as you can tolerate. The maximum discharge current is 120 amps, 12.8 times 120. You have about 1,500 watts. That's if you use it as a 12 volt battery. If you put them in series, it's two times that because they're both outputting 120 amps, but you got twice the voltage. 
twice the wattage. So that's why when I bought the inverter, I got a 3000 watt output inverter. The cutoff voltage is 10 volts divided by four is 2.5 volts. If you're at 2.5 volts, it's not good news. This means it's completely drained to 0%. You can do this a few times, but you definitely don't want to do this habitually. It will shorten the life of your batteries. Typically to lengthen the life of your batteries, the most you want to discharge it to is about 20%. Charge it up to 80%, discharge it to 20%. Kind of work around within that range. The charge temperature is zero to 50 C. The discharge temperature is minus 20 to 60 C. Storage temperature should be between zero and 45 C. The internal battery management system will cut off your output from charging or discharging if you exceed these temperatures. A bunch of different kinds of certifications. This is nice to have. Shipping classifications, which it's already shipped to your house, so you don't need to worry about that. Cycle life here is very important, 5,000 cycles. So if you do one full cycle, every single day divided by 365 that means it's going to last you 14 years now cycle life depends largely on how you use the system so that's why i talk so much about how to treat your batteries it says over here 0.2 c 25C, 80% DOD. What does all this mean? 0.2C means you're charging at 40 amps. 1C is 200 amp hour, right? 0.2 times 200 amp hour is 40 amps. It's assuming that you always charge it at maximum of 40 amps, which is around 500 watts, and it's around room temperature all the time, which is kind of like an ideal situation, right? Sometimes it's gonna get hotter, or colder and the maximum depth of this charge is 80%. So it's discharging at most down to only 20% and it looks like it's charging up all the way to 100% and then this charge and then this repeats for 5,000 times. It does not mean after you do this 5,000 times, this is not usable anymore. Usually what it means is the capacity of the original amount goes down about 20% of the original. So if you got five kilowatt hour after 5,000 cycles, you're still gonna get about four kilowatt hour of capacity. So their marketing says 4,000 cycles for 100% depth of this charge, 6,000 cycles for 80% depth of this charge, 15,000 cycles for 60% depth of this charge. Just know that even if you push it really hard, it's gonna last you at least 10 years. If you baby it a little bit, it might last you like 20 years instead. The BMS system also offers short circuit. So if you accidentally put a screwdriver in between here, it's gonna cut off the output. There's over voltage protection, meaning that if your inverter somehow breaks down and it tries to charge it at like 16 volts, it's not gonna let you do it. It's gonna cut it off. Over current, which is over 120 amps output, it will also cut it off. If you use it you know, too much, maybe the ambient temperature is too high, it'll cut off the output as well. Let me show you all the supporting items that I bought for this thing. I have a three kilowatt hybrid inverter from Chins. This is the breaker for the battery. I have two two gauge five foot cables for the battery. So the two gauge is actually required by this inverter. Um, it just won't fit anything bigger. These lug nuts came with this inverter. Eight gauge wire with a 10 gauge grounding wire for various AC connections. These pigtail is to connect to the solar panels. This breaker is a double pole breaker for the battery. 25 amp breaker for the solar panels. I only have 400 watts worth of solar, so it's somewhat spec low. I got two 25 amp AC breakers and they will eventually go to these plugs over here. This is one of the case and this is a typical household two socket outlet. I also have a cable that I just have laying around. I'm gonna use this to charge the battery through this inverter. You can charge it up to 40 amps, but my breaker in the wall only goes up to 20. So I don't need that thick a cable and I'm gonna limit it to up to 20 amps charging. So this piece is not included in the cost. There's a board backing material that you want to mount it on top of that it's not included in the cost. To put these two gauge lug nuts onto the cable, you need a crimper and possibly a cable cutter. And then you have this thing called a ferrule. When you put your stranded wire in here, it doesn't get a very good contact. But when you use a ferrule, it has very good contact and the wire won't fray outward and possibly short with other things. So this is a very neat and professional way to do things. Put it in to one of these guys. Nice and secure into the breaker. Every strand in there. There we go. Set it to two gauge wire and press. Mm. And that's what it looks like. We'll press it one more time over here. 
check that it's securely in there and we'll put the heat shrink over. I've crimped the other one as well. Done. I mounted the board on two studs using a stud finder. It's recommended to have 200 millimeters of clearance all around the inverter. I started mounting all the breakers onto the board and then I cut the wire to size, terminated them properly. This whole time the breakers were all off. Then I added the eight gauge wires for the PV panels and also the AC outputs. I've got everything running smoothly now. So the test is can we run three kilowatts out of these batteries continuously. I have a heater here, it's 1500 watts. I also have a hair dryer here that on full power, it's also 1500 watts. So if we run both of them out of the AC, we can max out the current coming out of the battery. These batteries at maximum outputs 120 amps. So we can actually reach that limit with this inverter combo here. Let me turn this guy on and also the hair dryer, 1500 watts. Zero amps right there. And we put it on 120 amps or so. I have the charging of the battery at zero amps. Output is zero amps. If I turn on the 1500 watt heater, we see around 60 amp output and also the hair dryer, 120 amps. And the inverter says it's at 100% right now. I can also check it over here, 115 amps or so. I've actually been charging this whole system for several days now with my 400 watts or the solar panels. So it's really underpowered in terms of solar power. It will probably take around two and a half days of full sun in order to charge this whole thing from zero to 100%. But getting about two kilowatt hour a day, it's more than enough to power my entire desk setup. That's why I have this extension cable here and I normally plug my desk into this thing and I run my entire desk, including the monitor, the laptop, the lights surrounding it, everything off of this plug here. So it's been recharging itself and I was able to take all of this completely off grid. You might not be able to afford an entire house backup system, but you can buy a smaller system, put some of the things solely on solar power and battery backup power, and you can slowly work your way towards reducing your entire electric bill down to zero. So you build it up a little bit at a time. I've set up the inverter in a way where it will only charge the batteries with solar. If it runs the batteries down to let's say 20%, I don't want it to go any further. It can switch over to AC power, which is this cable over here, and it'll just pull it off the wall, pull it off the grid. So you can use as much solar as the sun supplies. Let's say during the winter, right? There's clouds and stuff. You don't have as much solar. You just use the grid power. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This gives you a little bit food for thought. So if you guys are interested in getting the Golden Mate battery, you can actually put up to four in series, four in parallel if you want. So huge capacity here. There's a 5% off coupon code down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more. <music>